you spoke directly to me. But it filled me with wonder to hear you. Such a mystery. Would your voice be sweet and warm? Would it thunder like a storm? I just quiet my mind and listen. Sometimes in the rising sun, sometimes in the whale song. Times in the flight of the crane, you whisper my name, and it may not ring in my ear, but it comes through perfectly clear. I hear your voice just the same when you whisper my name. Oh, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Beautiful. This is a song I wrote fairly recently, a few months ago. Um, and when the young lady was asking me about, about you know, just dealing with, with, with the grief of, of loss, um, you know, it came to me also that, yes, we grieve, but I think it's also important to have gratitude and just to be grateful that that he had Mark in our lives. Amen. For the time that he was with us. So this is called with, with a grateful heart. Mm -hmm. Give thanks, give thanks for every sunny day. I give thanks, give thanks for every time it rains, for all that I have. All that I am with a grateful heart, I give thanks. Oh, I give thanks. Mm -hmm. For every smile that I see, I give thanks. Oh, give 
Thank you, Elliot. Thank you. Uh, thinking about thinking about our performance, our event before in the past. Maybe we have three or four, right? And I was thinking about the style of your uh, uh, singing versus Mark. That uh, when uh, every time you're up there in the states, Mark is your number one fans. You know, <laughs> we went to Cusina Padipina. You remember that time? You know, the uh, it's kind of like uh, shocking. You know the, the yes. CD I put out the cover photo was taken there. Oh my! <laughs> yeah. You you need to uh, you need to make sure that you're gonna tag me with all the music that you're putting out. Do you have a YouTube channel? Um, yeah, but I don't, there's a few things on there. A lot of the old stuff from three years, three, four years ago. Not, not a lot of recent stuff. But, but it, there is some stuff on there. On YouTube. So the one, the song that you, uh, that is not a private, can you send it to me so I can put it in my YouTube? Sure. Yeah, I, I want to put them in Mark's YouTube too, so, you know. And I'm going to um, search our picture together with our poster. Because okay. we get a couple of posters, we're, we're yeah. all on it, right? Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. You know, um, when better. when I told El, reach out with Elliot, actually, it's so amazing. When a true friend, when you message one time only, it just, he will respond right away. And I didn't even, he didn't even give me a hard time when I asked him, like, oh, maybe you're, busy because it's a working days and he told me what's the date and I told him it's a week with this that uh, he's got, supposed to be working he said you know what I'll be there he he, he responded that a way that he doesn't mind driving huh Elliot no, not at all for, for good friends uh, uh, girls wanna have fun <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> Girls wanna have fun in your house. Yes, <laughs> the craziest film that we did, right? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, we 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 uh we video we make a video of that. Yeah, you guys need to watch that. Where is the video that uh that we have? Yeah, we we should do that. And I want to uh uh you know the behind the scene of of that move of that video actually is this guy <laughs> Mervin. <laughs> Remember, he's the one that that yeah, he's our uh, yeah, no place to go, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Mervin, we're telling. I just remember it was late. Yeah, <laughs> we have so much fun. Yeah, super late. Yeah. Let's pretend to have a party, but it sounds like a real party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It's a real. It's out there. We can't really release it because we don't have the license to release it yet. You know, we can still do that. You know? Okay, guys. Uh, before I before before we forget, you know, we have a young artist here, our uh, Pit um, young ambassador, um, Kylo, and you know, Akrista Kylo. Actually, she had a YouTube channel too. So the interview uh, that he did for Elliot, it's gonna be on her YouTube. So um, add Krista because you, you guys are gonna see the 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 the, the interview there. Oh, yeah. okay. uh, Krista, did you, did you prepare any song? No, but yeah. here. <laughs> you have microphone. <laughs> oh, that's... She has a microphone. Oh God. Um... Can you, that that can I hear it? In ways, I am still performing. I did originally plan for a song, but I didn't think I was really great at it. <laughs> but I want to tell you about something. Okay. Bakyo, I hope I pronounced that right. I've only met him once, a couple of times before pre-pandemic. But I can already tell he was a good person. I wasn't looking at his appearance, no. I was looking at his eyes. There is a saying that the eyes are a portal to one's soul. And clearly, there was a lot of kindness. And I can tell he had a fighting spirit. Not because of the veteran uniform he wore. It's not because of that. His light, the man. I felt like he was the, t the kind of person that would ignite other people's hearts. He had one spark that can ignite multiple others to create more bigger good deeds for them. While he may not be with you, and I'm terribly sorry, I hope that he's able to... Hold on, that's really emotional. Um, able to have a good impact on everyone and make sure the careers they have have our legacy for him. Now, the story that I've written could be interpreted in many ways. And in fact, it is about a veteran of a little girl. This can be interpreted whatever way you want. Now, here it is. The story is called Black and White. A little girl like me had always seen colors in this world the blue that covers the sky and oceans, maybe even the warmth of a ray from the bright lights in the sky. Everywhere I go, colors appear and kept everyone in cheer. But as the girl went home and walked through the halls, she noticed a room, a room with no color. And it felt cold, shivering. She wondered why. Her parents had warned her to never enter the room the room had no color, but the child who was the color of blue had entered its cold atmosphere. She entered a room of black and white, reminding her of the colors from the yin and yang. She touched the cold walls and she took in the cold air. She then touched an item that felt like warm. Though the image she looked at was dull in color, she can't help by looking at the image itself. Turning around, a warm hand touched her, sh her shoulder, and looking at the photo, it was the man in black and white, wearing a veteran uniform, as he lifted her up. The girl in blue had tears in her eyes and sobbed. They had both smiled, engulfing the room. 
with warmth and color, now flooding the room of black and white. Now, this can be interpreted any way you want, but in chances, by her reuniting with the spirit of that lost one, she had now reunited the room with color itself. Thank, Thank you, Krista. And Krista, don't forget, when I interview you and even when we went to to Tita Darna, you remember you told me and also your mom that you guys love Mervyn, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> every time you yeah. every time every time you talk to me and your mom, the first thing you're gonna uh, it give me a goosebump. It yes. give me a goosebump. It it give me a goosebump, you know, that these uh, memories that we have with Elliot, uh, the craziness we've been doing, you know, through the years when we first met, right? You know, like going to your house. Now, you know, Elliot is very driven, you know, when we were thinking about doing some event and caroling and stuff like that. He will tell us like, hey, can you stop by after work, you know? I'll be here in the house, remember that, Ni? You know, his house is open to us. You know, the same thing with Deacon Santi. The people, you know, we invited a lot of people, but we choose the people who were invited. I think they're not here because they're scared with the, with the weather. Oh, yeah. They think that we're going to be outside. Yeah, because, the, you know, we said that it's going to be outside in the beginning. Yeah. But there's no way we can do that. It's so muddy outside. Even we have a state, it's raining anyway. <laughs> so, you know, with this pandemic, it's kind of scary to go out anyway, you know. And I don't have any regret. You know, I don't have any resentment or I don't feel sorry that they're not here. You know, as long as the people around here are with me today, with Mark, I know this is the right people in this in this room, with the with 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 big brother, Michael, with little brother Mervin, you know, Mervin, Mervin has been such a backbone in the in my house and outside the house with brother Mark, you know, and I uh, just realized also that Tony before before everything that you know. Uh, they get connected with Mike. Tony has actually been a part of our life, you know, because through Mark, through Mark, you know, I didn't know that because when I look at the video and all the texting and all the things that uh, he was telling me, Tony was part of it, you know, that he he's doing things with Tony in, in uh, because Tony is actually, Tony, why don't you tell them what you actually specializing? Well, I, I have a dance group. I do Filipino dance, hula, um, Filipino martial arts, um, lots of movement practices. So I, I, um, I do many things. <laughs> but I guess those would be the ones that I'll share. And just the deeper you get into a practice, it leads into other things. So um, I consider myself um, multidisciplinary as a creator. Yeah, it, uh, and now we have uh, Genesis sitting beside Tony. It's actually it's a coincidence that we just met this beautiful lady here, because uh, actually she is not actually the one who is Mark's roommate. It was her boyfriend Mike, the owner of the Warson Boxing Club, and after Mike moved out. Genesis doesn't want to go anywhere except here because uh, he get attached with the family, especially with Mark, because he's doing... Uh, uh, tell them what you do, Genesis. Hi, everyone. I'm Genesis. I've been here for three years in the presence of this beautiful man who I was blessed to live with and share some coffee with in the morning. Not boy, boy, not boyfriend, girlfriend, only no, roommate. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, brother, Mike. But Mike, thank God for Mike because while I was falling in love, I also was able to have a brother here. And while my boyfriend was at work, me and Mark became great friends. And the two years that I was able to enjoy his presence was the most beautiful blessing in my life. 
I never had a brother who was full of light and was full of big dreams to say, pursue everything that you believe in. Um, I, I work in the healing arts and um, the holistic medicine side of healing. Um, right now I'm still in the process of becoming who I need to become, but I work in a little healing center and as we all know, we are all healing from something in our life and we're now healing from the loss of our beautiful friend Mark and our beloved will always be with us, healing us, and I know he's here with us today. Amen. So I thank you guys too for allowing for me to continue to be here in Mark's presence because it's also been a big gift for me in my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, my beautiful Genesis and my beautiful Tony, that when Mark was diagnosed with COVID when he was in the hospital, these two ladies are actually in our 40th days of praying and praying from day one that Mark was in the hospital. We do Zooming and do positive and energy transport. Uh, and you know, uh, it's like the energy was going around in that zooming thing, right? And touching Mark to the hospital. But like, uh, like I know I was still, uh, how would you call that? Because I have so much faith, but I'm still going like a roller coaster, you know? I'm not gonna den deny or lie about it that one day I will say, okay, I'll give it all to God. But one day I will, I will be in pain and I said, and still question God, why? What did my son did to you? You know, why, why, why all the people in the world? Why did you get, why did you take this person that loves you the most? You know, because in my family, I know Mark is the one every Sunday, he will bug me to go to church with him. And not only in Christian church, Catholic church, he even go to Buddhist place, you know? Uh, because he loved life, he loved living things, and um, so it's really kind of hard uh, to to accept sometimes. But at the end, I always know that God has a purpose, because uh, it makes sense to me that Mark lost his life at the time that everybody is so fearful with COVID, and. COVID is really evil, but when you think about it, when I think about it, since COVID, people become more uh, believer and get more attached to the God, you know? Because there's the only one hope we're holding is God, you know? To ask for a miracle that this pandemic will be gone, you know? So they become more closer to their loved one because they always think about and fear that you never know who's going to go next, right? Because it can get contaminated. And once your family goes to the hospital, uh, I, I, I hope it's not going to happen, right? But most of the thing that I've been hearing is that they never get out anymore. And you cannot even see your loved ones anymore. So the people that still alive become more loving to their own family because they're so scared, you know? that or oh, even Richard I was terrified I always tell him wash your hand did you wash your hand you take a bath first before you before sitting in, in watching TV you know especially when he works somewhere else you know I always tell you right no to, to, to take a bath first you know take out her clothes and stuff like that you know and I get mad when uh, find out that there's so many people in the place that he's um, he's seeing you know because uh, money to me is not really important. It, it's okay if as long as we pay our bills and our rent. I don't want him to work harder. I, I, I'm, I just want him to be home and have like one or two people, you know, uh, get scheduled. I get more paranoid actually because it's, we are dealing with uh, invisible enemies, you know. So what, what, what we do is like we're holding into God only, you know, that God is our uh, salvation, our our uh, refugee that we always say like the only thing we can hold in is like to believe in him that one day he's gonna, it, it's going to happen that it's going to be gone, you know. 
Doc, uh, do you remember what is the fondest memory you have with Mark? There's so many of them I know, but what is the most funny or things that you remember about him? Or, or loving ways that he's serious? I never see him serious until he told me that he was worried about you if I die first, remember? <laughs> you know, Elliot, Mark was telling me that, Mom, I was worried about uh, Big Dad. I said, why? I said, what if you, if you pass away and then Richard... Uh, is the only one in the house. He's, all he do now is watch Brady Barnes, Tris Company, <laughs> Bonanza, <laughs> Gunsmoke. <laughs> and when you're not here anymore, what's going to happen to him? And I told him, he can live because uh, he's a strong person, you know? And when you think about him, he's worried about people, but unfortunately, he's the one who passed, you know? That's kind of... So, do you remember anything, fun memory with him, though? I wish I had really sharp memories, but, um, no, it was just always fun to be with Mark. You know, he was, um, there were so many different facets to Mark, so <laughs> he could be a boy a lot of times when you're around him, you know, kind of goof around, play pranks on you, and, uh, and then it's, Essentially, um, and we just had to kind of, uh, you know, kind of shrug those things off. But he, you know, he was always uh, constantly on the move and constantly, uh, you know, thinking of something to do next. Mm -hmm. I wish I could have tapped into some of his energy that he had. But um, no, I, I just, I, my fondest memories are not really things he said or did is just spending time with him. Luckily with you know, once he started up his music career, I spent a lot we spent a lot of time together in the car riding the events. Mm -hmm. And you know, he was always I guess what I would say, you know, I'm not a professional Hi Angel. Uh, How are you, honey? Okay. How are you? Oh, thank you for coming. Sorry, yeah. Late. No, 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 you're not late. Because you're next. <laughs> I'm not a, uh, professional okay. artist, but Mark would always, uh, he would never complain or never, you know, boss me about how he wanted me to do the song. He was just happy that I would do it. Yeah. And uh, so he was always very encouraging in that regard. And, you know, I, know, I guess some of the funny things, I guess, was performing with Mark at Ludie's ex-family's at a uh, big Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen to <laughs> this. I, I mean, it could have been pretty awkward, but, uh, you know, it, just, it was just like any other event. We just kind of showed up there and sang, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking oh, I'm putting all my stuff here for a moment. <laughs> Are you there, Marvin, on, um, on Ashley's 18th birthday? No, he wasn't. I, okay. That's why I was still. I was thinking. Uh, yeah, that was. You know, I. You know, Tony. You know, Tintin, right? Christine Hall. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, you you met um, Ashley already. Mm -hmm. Okay. On her 18th birthday, uh, Tintin uh, asked them to sing, and of course, uh, Rich. You know, Richard. is a kind of person. He never complained. He, he just do it. You know, he just do it. You know that what you call confidence. They had confidence. You know, can you imagine? Pull up hole. Everyone is my ex, and he's the only one who's not. <laughs> and then, and then they are, they were singing in front of them. You know, and my ex is my ex husband is there actually. So, so it's kind of like weird, like right? hard hard for him. But he didn't feel anything. It's just like, uh, it's awkward, but I don't care, you know. I'm supporting Mark and uh, just doing what for Tintin and, and, uh, and Ashley. And I always appreciate Richard for that because he always... I know that uh, Mervyn and Mark has a lot of uh, experience being together because ever since on my 60th birthday, actually Mervyn and and uh, Mark performed on my 60th birthday. That is the birth of Going Back and the birth of Baguio. That's where he started his career, you know? So, 
yeah we're gonna stay here forever if we're gonna have to tell you the experience we have with mark me and Marvin, especially in Seattle, Washington. I know Mark already know what is that. <laughs> so, uh, Elliot, because uh, you, you did not uh, meet, uh, this is actually Angel, the Rolling Hard Riders uh, from Mark's uh, Biker, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, he's like a brother to uh, to Mark. They're all, we become friends, you know, and then he, you know, good uh, good uh, friend and close friend because of Mark, his brother Mark. Do you remember the fun memories you have? Uh, the most important one that you, uh, the one that uh, just uh, uh, hit you right now. What is it, uh, Angel? It's an honor to work with him. Doing uh, our video, going hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the most memorable part. Yeah. Most honorable part is uh, I was able to work work with him, but it was an honor to know him. Yeah, so. That's a scary. That's a scary, a scary movie, actually. You know the video that you guys are making, yeah. and it's all credited to the younger brother. Yeah. It's, yeah behind the scene okay guys if you see the 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 video of the rolling heart that they did they did it's so amazing because i just find out that uh elliot that the red truck we have the old one mm -hmm. um Mervin was on the back of that on the bed of the 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 truck and he had the you know the tripod and also the camera and one of the things. We had licenses and everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary well, because we're there though, remember? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, can you can you imagine one big break? One big break. Maybe we'd be out on that on that pickup truck, right? He can be thrown away, you know? But these guys are their devil. These guys are their devils. They actually, one of them, they actually go up like that. Oh, and then he was standing on the, on the motorcycle uh, riding. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember how we got out of the ticket? Oh, you did? They pulled up and like... Uh... We somehow managed like to get the fourteen guys to all pose like they were taking pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, we're just taking pictures. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Just like a bunch of hard bikers just like you know, if you also watch that video, most of the most of the biker are big teddy bird like this guy, but with a big heart. You know, I that the first time I met them at Mark's a house in in Ontario, like in Upland, I, I was terrified with them because they're all big and they're wearing like yeah. jacket of the, you know, the real uh, top guy. And I said, oh my God, I can't believe that this is Mark's group. And then I finally find out when they gave me a hug at Kapistahan, when they were singing like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, oh my God, these people are so crazy, good looking people that so have a big heart. I love it. I, I fall in love with them, you know. They even give me a gift uh, the last time that you guys are here, you know. Yeah. yeah, so these are... Tony has a lot of memories with Mark, too, because uh, Mark enrolled in, in in her class with Erin, huh, Tony? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, Deacon Santi. Deacon Santi has a good memory with Mark because this house was being baptized and uh, blessed by Deacon Santi, right, Deacon? And then, uh, even before when Mark's still alive, Deacon already told me that Mark is a calm person, you know, that he's nice. When people tell me the how, how calm is Mark, I always say, oh, man, I get ripped off by Mark, you know? Oh. <laughs> because he's so nice with everyone except with me and Mervyn. <laughs> <laughs> we did, you know, I, I know Mark is listening. He knows how hard he gave us sometimes, you know. <laughs> Mervin bought two chopping board, one for meat, one for vegetable. I remember that. And Mervin always in my back. Every time I go to the bathroom, he will tell me, "Did you flush the toilet twice?" No. Because no, because during that time, uh, we Mervin is like. Like a doctor. He's like, he remembered things that the doctor and the nurses were telling us 
how we gonna take care of Mark? Me, I'm a nurse, but everything is going out in my brain. I think when your son is the one, or your kids, or your family are sick, uh, you try your best to take care of them, but you're so nervous. You're nervous. You're gonna be nervous because that's your family. You don't want them to die on your hand, right? That you need to be perfect. So Mervin is so calm. He listened. Uh, uh, he knows everything. Like how many how many medicines he's gonna take for every four hours. He knows that, you know. And when we and when uh, when we forget or not sure about it, Mervin will call the the hospital about it, you know. So Mervin. Do also the plushing for Mark's, uh, you know, uh, bile. So, Mark and Marvin are really close to each other during our Seattle. Even though we have some up and down, I always, I, Mark at the end will always tell me that he really appreciate everything that he did for him. I said, don't tell that to your brother, you know. So. Mark is not here with us only in flesh, but he is here with the spirit. Right now, I know he's here and listening to all of us, remembering what it's like with, with us, you know? Thank, thank you, thank you, Angel. Thank you for being here for us. Thank you. And Elliot, uh, your friendship is really important to us, you know, because the, we, we're, we're in the beginning, we are the one that's in, in, the, in the process of like how we're going to do the music. And Richard, you know, Richard, a very simple person, I asked him, what can you say about Mark? He was telling me, he will never be forgotten. That's a powerful one word, you know. Because all of us will have a lot of things that we remember. But later on, in a couple of years, maybe even a month, a couple of months, we go on our life and forget, you know. But I said, people doesn't die. Never die. Ne love never die. As long as we love the person, you know. You see my posting today? That's what I actually said. You know, people never die. As long as there's, there's people that loves that person, you know, it will stay forever in our heart, you know. It's easy to say sometimes, you know, with things that going on, uh, sometimes we sleep, but at the end, when we're calm, we remember again, you know. Okay, so we're blessing our food today as we uh, move on. I know big brother is right there he worked so hard to keep this house clean you know taking care of bella and uh there's so many things that are going on right now with the house because uh when mark buy this house he was in a hurry remember that me we told him like oh go check first because this is an old house there's maybe some problem with it but he fell with in love with this house because he said because that's gonna be my uh, rolling hard riders. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> oh my God! I was begging him, Mark, five more, four more. Okay, we still have to go. We check on that. Check on that. Uh, that house. No, this is for my rolling hard riders parking place. You know. <laughs> you know that's why I, I put it in Facebook that he was he uh, was uh, riding in a motorcycle because. When he when he got a pneumonia, remember that day, I was crying and at the same time hitting him. I said like, oh, "You really wanna you really wanna die? When are you gonna stop doing that? You know, look, you have pneumonia and you're riding in rain, you know." Yeah. And then he told me like, "If I'm gonna die, I wanna die doing what I love to do." I said, "I give up, you know. <laughs> I give up, you know. That's why, you know." After that, I just go along with it because I know that's what makes me, him happy. And I always, I told Richard, if I only, we didn't see this, that it's going to happen. If I only knew when he start picking on my food, like that she's not supposed to eat, mm -hmm. I will even, if, we, if I only knew, if I can see what's going to happen, I will buy him things that he really likes to eat, you know, because I always tell him not to eat it. Remember that, me? Very, uh, in that regard. Yeah, that's what we're always fight about. About he wants to eat the shells, food, and that's not supposed to eat. Mervin does. 
will say like, oh, Mark, we need to peel up your, your, your fruit because you can eat that, well, you know, when there's, no, when there's no skin. You can eat fruit with a skin, but you have to take out the skin, you know. So um, that's, again, Mervyn teaches me, teaches me how to prepare his food, you know. But sometimes we take like two hours, three hours cooking, and then he doesn't even want to eat. <laughs> <Wow. Yep. laughs> but uh, again, uh, those memories will stay forever in our heart. And Mark is now eating what he wants anyway. You know, <laughs> my mom said that the spirit will eat with the you know the smoke, the like steam of the food. He smell it, and that's the food. I don't know how uh, if everybody knows that because in the Philippines there's so many beliefs, you know, and I always embrace that, you know, the tradition of the Filipino and stuff like that. Spanish tradition and Filipino, it's almost the same, I know. There's a lot of them that's almost the same, you know. As long as you respect its other belief, that's more important. Don't push your. It you know it's so easy. If you're right, but the person doesn't believe you, forget about it. Just let her do whatever she want to do, you know. Don't push your right, you know. Especially you're not the one who's doing or paying for it. <laughs> right? Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you. Uh, who's going to be the one to pray uh, for the food? Mike, do you want to pray for the food, Mike? Since this is your home, you know, this is your home. Uh, yeah. We are all gathered here today in remembrance of you, Mark. We know you're here. We love you. We miss you. We're here to enjoy your favorite foods for you. Bless us with your presence. We know that you're here filling us up every day with your bright, bright smile and your spirit. Guide us through this journey of, of troubling days without you. Guide us with your love. Fill your mom. Fill your siblings. Fill us all, please, Lord. May this food nourish our spirits, our souls on this day that we are not doing so good in remembrance of not having you here in physical form, Mark, but allow us to nourish our spirits and souls with you, with all the memories of you, with all the love that you shared with us, with every moment of encouragement, with every song that you sang for all the masses to learn about God, to learn about truth, to learn about you and your journey and your struggle. Bless everyone that walks into the door. Bless our lives. Bless our hearts. Bless your brother Michael. Bless your brother Michael. That just woke. Bless your sister Tony. Bless your mommy. Bless Richard. Bless all the souls that are here in remembrance of your beautiful, beautiful soul. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God, for giving us the opportunity to under the beautiful light of your son, Mark Viyama Cole. In the name of Jesus, in the name of all of our angels, we bless our food, we bless this beautiful day, and we raise this beautiful spirit very, very high in the highest of highs. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mark. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh,